You're listening to Paisal, a true rom-com. I'm your co-host Paige and this is... Jessel. We had a brief, unplanned break from the podcast due to illness. Not COVID. Not COVID, confirmed. Officially confirmed. To not be COVID. Yes. We had planned to talk a bit about hobbies in this episode. As we were flicking through this book here, it was difficult to bring the next few pages of it together in a topic, a single topic that made sense to talk about together. It's as if we never thought that we would be talking about the book. Yeah, it's as if we were just having our relationship and living our life, not expecting to share it with anyone in a narrative format. That's true. So true. Mm. I don't know what that was. I'm in a really snarky mood today. Is that because you watched a snarky movie? Maybe. We watched a film about the end of the world and I'm quite obsessed with stories about the end of the world. That's an understatement. Me, 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 me. The one that we watched was just a little bit too close to home. It felt really depressing, made me feel really depressed about the state of the world and the future of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. But at least I have Jessel. We'll go down together. Jessel had the idea for a better topic for this episode. Can you give us a brief description of your proposed topic? Oh my god. I just like using the word like proposed or proposal to pretend to put pressure on Jessel. <sighs> what we discussed was chatting about how we kept in touch most days because of how busy you were generally speaking with um, pet sitting and stuff and we weren't able to meet up regularly or as regularly as we want wanted. Are you going to add anything? Let's just get to it. Jessel is the person who came up with an idea to address this issue, which horrified me. He suggested a phone call. Video call? You suggested a phone call first. Okay. And I'm like, I hate phone calls. And I was thinking, oh, what on earth would we talk about? And I don't think I expressed my dislike of phone calls or that idea. I don't think I expressed that too accurately. As in, I don't know about too accurately, but not enough. Enough that you suggested an alternative? Yeah. Which was? Video calls. The, uh, the, the, is it brilliance? No. The, uh, it's something technology. I don't know, what, what, what's the word? I have no idea what you're talking The brilliance of technology? No. The, the modern... No. <laughs> the, this, the, I have no idea what you're trying to say. It's like the saying it's like it's a good technology it's, um allowed it to happen. I I cannot think of a phrase that means that like a, a common phrase. But I do tend to get phrases a little wrong. <sighs> yeah, I can't think of it. But it's it's a phrase. Yeah, it'll probably come to me during the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired and stressed. The magic. The magic of technology? Yes. Is that a phrase people say? The magic of whatever. The magic of diarrhea? Yeah, it's magical. Yeah. Um, I mean, you said it. I said it as an example of something that would prove you wrong. You're wrong. So yeah, video call. It's very interesting thinking back to that now because at the time... Video calls were not a part of my life. You do. Because my colleagues in my day job work at a few different locations, we did have every two to four weeks, we would have a video call team meeting. But it certainly wasn't a big part of my life or anything. It took a little bit for me to get used to. I was a little bit uncomfortable because... When you're catching up in person, you know, you can be occupying your hands with different things and, you know, eating or walking. All of those things make it easier for me to be social. When I'm just sitting down, I don't have something to do with my hands or my feet. I struggle a little bit more. Yes. And so I would just be like 
sitting on a sofa or lying on a bed wherever I was living at the time, which was many different places throughout our first year. And all I could be really doing was like holding my phone up, looking at this person that I'd fallen in love with. Yeah. And not say much. I guess we just asked each other how the day was. Yeah, yeah. I think at that point there was an unfortunate amount of chit chat. Unfortunate? Yeah, any amount of chit chat is unfortunate. But it wasn't quite like when we caught up in person and we just delved right into the really deep conversations about all sorts of things, which I really loved and I'm very comfortable with. It was a very different dynamic and it took me a while to get used to. Yeah, I mean, I the only video calls I would do would be um, the occasional call with my parents. That was the only thing. And I think it was more phone call rather than video call. I don't think I was in contact with anyone through the phone regularly. So Any friends that I've had know that you don't call me. If I take a call or make a call, it's usually because I absolutely have to. So, for example, being paid to do it at work or to make a medical appointment or something like that. Other than that, it's just been my parents that I talked to on the phone or used to talk to on the phone. I would usually try to do that while I was walking or while I was cooking or something. And I'd be like this because, you know, why do things the easy way with a hands-free thing when you can be doing this? Yeah. Was that before the advent of... uh speakerphone speakerphone is inappropriate in many situations although i guess when i was cooking it usually wasn't in public i would hope not (laughs) unless you're using like a pub um a park uh, barbecue or something could have been camping yeah cooking while camping and i did a little bit of that before i got too too old and too tired for that kind of stuff i guess i don't know After a little while, the calls increased and then it it actually just became a part of the end of every day for me. If I didn't see you, I would have a call with you before I went to sleep. And then I think even if I did see you, sometimes we would say goodbye. You'd go back to your place. I'd go back to whatever place I was looking after. And then we'd do a a video call when I got home. Well, it, it would start off like see, I'd, I'd message and like, oh, what are you doing at the moment? And it would be like, oh, nothing much, just twiddling my thumbs. Yeah, twiddling my thumbs. And that was like basically, a, is it a code or is it just another way of saying that you're just waiting for a call or something? Yeah, I think you interpreted it as, yeah, you're not doing anything. We can have a call. No. Well, maybe the first time. But then you knew what you were saying <laughs> and you knew what was going to happen. It's not, not, it's just not, uh, so, you can't, you can't act like you didn't know what was happening. So I would send a message and be like, oh, I'm just twiddling my thumbs. And then I'd just hold my phone and wait for the call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I kind of miss that, that whole thing. Cause I, I came to really like that routine. But we live together now, and that's definitely much better. Yes. I love falling asleep next to you. I agree. True I agree. story. What do you mean, true story? I don't know. It it is, I mean, story. it's happening, it's... so it's obviously true. Yeah. <laughs> As a side note, I want to point out some phrases that I really despise when I hear them. And they're all along the lines of, to be honest, or if I'm being honest, to or be to, to be fair, to tell the truth. Those phrases upset me so much because I think, well, if you're using that phrase to say that right now you're telling me the truth, does that mean that every other thing that you said to me has not been the truth? Why is it that you're having to spell out that this one thing is the truth? I have no idea. It annoys me. I'm sorry. I don't like it. Oh no. You're like Pauline Hansen. Is that what, what the song was? No. Yes, but, and this probably didn't get picked up on the microphone, but I was actually singing it 
in the tune of It's Like That by Run DMC. And that's the way it is. Cool. And that's all I have to say about that. I think this is going to be a short episode because because of the break that we've had, we're a little bit out of pie. Out of practice. That's so I think we, we don't have the the energy and the everything that was starting to get better with each episode. We've kind of stepped back a bit now and we're kind of having to start up again. I'm okay. I don't know. Wow. You're dragging me down with you. Yeah. I like to more think about it as I'm throwing you under the bus and I'm already under the bus. I was going to say that. Or... How do you throw someone under the bus while already being under the bus? Okay. So I'm under the bus and you were standing next to the bus and I've grabbed your legs and I've pulled you under with me. No, 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 no. No, what I'm that... going to say something different because you're about to call me out on saying the wrong thing. So <laughs> actually, I'm standing next to the bus yes. and you're standing on a park bench. On a bench. And I'm like pulling you down onto the ground. Yeah. Well, pulling you down to my level. Are you under the bus? Shortly, I will be. Uh, okay, I don't even know how this started, so I've, I can't remember. I can't even remember what what I was arguing about. (laughs) I guess you accomplished your mission. Yes. Just know that you were wrong in the beginning. You, oh, right. You threw me under the bus. All right. But then you're like. So I pulled you down to my level and then I threw you under the bus. But then you also said you were under the bus as well. I didn't think of that, but Jess will just dog me out of my own hole. No. You said you were under the bus as well. Yeah, that was in a different timeline. That was in the darkest timeline. This is a less dark timeline. Oh, okay. Whatever. (laughs) I give up. No, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. Please don't give up on me. I give up on this scenario. Okay.